has good technique, he will be elite. If his technique becomes great, not just good, then he's a Hall of Famer. Fighting through contact, fighting through offensive line, being a double team, multiple moves stacked into one, just a play of pure domination. This is actual film, this is actual football talk. It's a football show, so it's football, not storylines. And you are listening to the 53rd edition of Blue It Splits. Um, speaking of that, uh, or not speaking of that, but watching that uh, <laughs> Spotify, that Hello Darkness, my old friend, immediately made me think of this uh, scene from uh, Batman vs. Bane, and, and Jets fans are Bane, so I'll just play that really quickly, too. the dark. I was born in it, molded by it. I didn't see the light until I was already a man. By then it was nothing to me but black. Jets fans. <laughs> Myself. Um, tough week uh, for the Jets. We'll get into some of the talking points, um, I'll, I'll hit some of them. Don't want to spend too, too long on them because obviously uh, doing the film reviews and, and uh, all that stuff, I'll, I'll work through a lot of those, a lot of those plays. Welcome back to Dark Demonic. I, I know you said you're, uh, you're, you're quitting, um, but you're back. I, I know you're back. No, no Jets fan can leave, which, by the way, uh, leads me to, to pull up this. I completely forgot for a second. But uh, this is one of the comments on the channel. Uh, I think this was after the the Raiders game. The the uh, some some douche commented. Uh, he this is what I, I opened up my monologue basically and said, okay, you know these games, these are how the Jets can lose. The Seahawks just lost to the Giants. The Rams golf sucks. The Browns the point differential. The 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 you know all, all of that and this guy responded by he's stressing the eight and four Seahawks he's stressing the nine and four Rams he's stressing the nine and three Browns he's stressing us at zero and fifteen versus Bill Belichick who's five hundred and three against us in the last twenty years so clearly is worried we're just a QB away worst introduction to ever, anything ever I wonder if that guy will comment and say you know what I was wrong you had a reason to stress because I'm sure that same guy w- was not stressed at all when the Jets were up by whatever points to the Raiders, four points with 17 seconds left, and they threw, um, and, and it was third down. You know, I'm sure he wasn't stressed. I'm sure he wasn't stressed when the Jets didn't, um, could have could have easily pulled away in that Patriots game, or not pulled away in that Patriots game, they could have easily finished that Patriots game if they got a couple of first downs. And thank God Flacco um, missed, I believe it was Gore on a check down. That would, would have been an easy first down. Sure, he wasn't stressed in the Broncos game. Um, I'm sure he wouldn't stress the Patriots game. So bravo to, to that guy. Bravo to everybody um, who just automatically assumed the Jets were going to get the number one pick because you know how football works. It's very predictable. And no team could, and every team could beat um, any team or the worst team could beat a good team on any, any, on any game. It happens. Um, now, with that being said, can the Jaguars beat the Bears this week? Yes. Can the Jaguars beat the Colts if the Colts potentially rest Phillip Rivers before the playoffs because they don't really care about seeding because there's no fans? All possible. So am I going to freak out and say it's completely over? No. Do I think it's a very low chance that gets did, did the Jets get the first pick? Yes. Do I think not that getting the first pick is – is it sucks – Completely. If I was in the show, you know, 48 hours ago, uh, I might be in a much different mood. But does that get in that first pick? Uh, obviously, great in the chances that we're going to have a really successful team and a, and a successful quarterback. For sure, it does. But getting the second pick and, and getting one of these Wilsons or um, Fields with a good coach, could the Jets easily be, um, you know, contender? Yes. But uh, to get, you know, which we'll, we'll evaluate these guys. Some of these, 
some of these Wilson takes after after that game last night are, are pretty crazy. Um, I, I see the twitch he has. I see the natural arm talent. I see how he changes his arm angles. I see the athleticism. I, I see the velocity in the balls. But every throw the kid made, like people are hyping up. And you know, one of the throws deep on the right sideline, it was actually a bad ball because um, it should have been high, uh, outside and high, and he threw it low and inside where a good corner in the NFL either deflects, deflects that or, or picks it off, and everybody's like, oh, my God, the best throw I've seen, and this is ridiculous. Like, Again, um, if you if you come to this channel, I'm sure you know this stuff, but uh, just just don't go on Twitter and look at some of these takes because some of them are awful, whether it be from from random people, the guys like Baldy out there who I'm not even afraid to call it out anymore, just lazy with their takes. The, every, everything he puts up is garbage in my opinion. Um, his evaluation, a couple of things this week, like his second play of the of the Becton breakdown was actually a bad block, and he's saying he moved he, he moved Donald. He's actually moving Donald right into the play where he actually gets it on the running back. Like, uh, just be careful what you watch. But we, the, the you know, not the positive thing, but literally as soon as I end recording this, um, I'm gonna have a hundred plus play review of Wilson easily. Hundred plus play. I'm gonna have. 100 plus play of fields if he comes if if that's where the Jets finish um and I'll be doing guys like Sewell and Jamar Chase etc so uh you will have plenty and plenty of film to watch here if you are not a subscriber you'll get about half of that on here and on Twitter the subscribers uh for about $50 a year um we'll get all the analytics we'll get all the breakdowns we'll get the list of the strengths and weaknesses because I'll talk generically about the strengths and weaknesses on the show but unless you're a subscriber you won't get the full list um even though maybe on here I'll read them I, I I don't I don't know but 53rd edition 45 plays um 23 to 20 again there's so many directions I can go I'm I'm not mad at the players um, I am a little bit of, you know, kind of angry with the guys like Beckton and McGovern coming out and calling people not real fans and stuff like that. Like you've been here for five minutes. Like just if you, maybe if you guys didn't suck so bad the entire year, we wouldn't be in a position to be rooting for all these losses. So not really happy with that. Not really getting into my soapbox with that stuff. Um, but I'm more mad at the Rams. Uh, McVay completely blew this game in terms of not targeting the linebackers. The third and fourth uh, and fours were terrible calls in, in, in my opinion. Um, Goff has always been overrated in my opinion. Uh, McVay loses in spite of him. If he had a good quarterback, they'd be a lot farther along as a team, in my opinion. Uh, Goff is not it, but um, it's it's it is it upsetting. You know, it's not like we got a great game. We got some good games from some young guys, but it's not like you had a, a young quarterback who's going to be here with a new coach. All this stuff throwing to Mims, it was. Throws from a quarterback who's most likely, you know, ninety percent sure he's not going to be here next year. Coached by a coach who's not going to be here in two weeks. The ball being ran by a running back who won't be here next year, who's 37 years old, 38 years old, who ran the ball 23 times. A random dude I've never heard of blocking a punt. Like it was such an unsatisfying win. It was more the Rams. Uh, it, the Jets did play like well. Like they, they came out, you know, for, for the most part, like, you know, the, the defensive line, the guys played hard. You know, Donald had one of probably his best game of the year. You know, there were positives to it. Um, but the Rams blew this game. Like the, their defense blew the game. Their offense blew the game. Like it was bad. So just took advantage of that. Um, but two games left. We'll figure out where they sit. Uh, hopefully, you know, the Jaguars beat the Bears this week. But apparently there, there's some rumors now that they might be resting James Robinson, their, their best player on offense. So, uh, you know, Schefter came out and said they're resting him in practice. But apparently before that, he tweeted that they're resting him for the game and then deleted it and then put it for practice. So maybe he heard something. And he, and he kind of uh, jumped the gun a little bit and put that out there. Um, but, you know, again, if the Jets can beat the Rams when, you know, the spread is 17 and a half points, can can the Jaguars beat the Bears at home uh, against Trubisky? I, I think so. It can happen. But if not, again, there are quarterbacks who come out, and obviously you're, I hate the argument, oh, the first pick doesn't matter. It matters. You, if you trust your coaching, if you trust your coaches, your GMs, your talent evaluators, you want the first shot in, in, in that bucket. You don't say, oh, well, I'd rather just have, you know, it's like saying, okay, well, I don't care about the first pick. I'd rather just take a quarterback at the end of the first round. Like my evaluations don't matter. Of course, having the first pick is, is the most important thing. Um, but it's not like the, the second quarterbacks don't work out. You know, the Russell Wilson's out there, the, the, uh, the Dak Prescott's, et cetera. Um, so I'll heavily evaluate these guys' um, fields. You know, again, you, you can't let two games um, affect your opinion. I know that the two games, Northwestern and whoever else it was before that, um, are greatly affecting people's opinions of him. But you can't let two games over the course of his last two years greatly change your opinion. And listen, there's a lot of quarterbacks who are one-read quarterbacks who once their first read is not there, 
panic a little bit because that's how that's how their offense is. Trevor Lawrence has had games like that more more in 2019 and 2020. But there's games you can go to his game log and look up games where he didn't produce well. I'm not comparing Fields to Lawrence necessarily. Justin Herbert last year, gimmicky offense. First read wasn't there. He panicked. Justin Herbert's about to be the offensive rookie of the year. I'm not saying Fields will be that, but again, do not get crazy in a couple of bad games in in a career uh, the last two years that have been very good from, uh, from Fields. So we'll evaluate him. We'll, we'll see uh, what he's like. Again, massive review coming to this channel. Um, considering you know if the Jets do finish at two, uh, which is the worst they can finish, but we'll see. Again, that's 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 months down the road, road at least. Um, and with Fields, you hear oh quarterbacks from 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 uh, Ohio State like that. That is the dumbest thing I've I've heard of forever. Okay, so name another quarterback from Michigan. Brady came from Michigan. Name another quarterback from from Purdue. I believe that was where, where Breeze came from. Name another quarterback from from Texas Tech. That's where Mahomes came from. Uh, another one from Wisconsin. That's where Wilson came from. Name another one from Oregon. That's where Herbert came from. The offensive rookie of the year. That's, that's a really good quarterback who's number one pick. LSU. How many quarterbacks have they had? Uh, um, Josh Allen, East Bumblefuck. Like, where did these guys come from? You know, it's like don't like name two schools who have produced really, really good quarterbacks. Like, it, it, it rarely, rarely happens. Like, maybe. What Oklahoma with with Murray and and Baker, but like other than that, like how many of these guys come from schools? Like okay, uh, you know Rogers with Cal. Like you could apply that reasoning to every single school, and and every guy, even if the guys are not comparable, you know Fields is now is now Dwayne Haskins. Uh, you know, uh, Darnold Darnold is is uh is Mark Sanchez. You know, like it. The comparisons are so lazy because they don the same jersey without the same players around them, without the same system. It's just so dumb. It is so dumb. Um, so Fields will look into him. Wilson shooting up draft draft boards. Some respected guys have him as their two now. I'll see again when you're playing at a school like BYU and you're playing schools like like uh, South Alabama or North Alabama and whatever these schools are. Um, you have to evaluate um, a lot of different things. You know, translatable traits to the NFL. Uh, there's a lot of things I'll get into with him. There's so many things I have to look at if it translates. Um, the movement, the the arm, the velocity, the the windows he throws into, the antip- anticipation, the, the way he goes through reads. I got I got to see a lot of stuff. Um, I'll be dedicating like eight hours of that just after this podcast. Like today's gonna be a lot of film. Uh, then there's the argument for Sam Darnold. Uh, listen, uh, no. In my opinion, uh, he's had this was like his first like okay, pretty impressive game this year. Um, I don't think a new coach. Sorry, I did that last. I was like, there's like stuff on my computer, I'm like scratching off, and I noticed it shake shake the camera or uh, shake the camera last time. I'm not gonna do that again. Even though I just started doing it. Um, you know, Donald's past that point. Uh, especially, I think it's like July. You have to commit to that fifth year. This July, I have to commit to that fifth year with him, um, and it's twenty five million dollars. There's a new coach with a relatively new GM want to commit to Sam Darnold um, going into what's going to be a big contract. Yeah. Listen, like you, you commit that $25 million to him and he plays like he wants to. Now you're already past that rookie contract, which is a massive thing for GMs and, and, and team building um, with a guy, with a kid who hasn't played the ball this year. Like let's, let's be honest. Like he's been pretty, pretty terrible um, for the most part, minus a few, a few flashes and then maybe a game here, here, you know, and a game there that, that are all right. But, uh, still alarming traits about him and the thing is oh well let's just let's just build around him or trade down let's draft Sewell and then see how he does this year great but what happens next year when you you spend that 80 million dollars in free agency because they basically have to they take all these draft picks and if you trust Douglas and he's had and he has a, a similar outcome to what he did this year in his first even just round or two and you get another Beckton you get another Mims you get another you know you get a corner who's solid another hall and the Jets now win seven, eight games, and now you're sitting at 13, 14, 15 next year. Now you have to trade up to two from 13, from even from 10, and give up multiple first-round draft picks. Now you're now you're hurting that quarterback that you're about to trade up for because now you're not building around him the way you could have if you just took a quarterback this year. Um you know, when you had, when you had the opportunity to, and it's not like these guys are like, they are consolation prizes kind of, but like, they're not, they're not Lawrence, but they are guys who are deserving of top five picks. At least it seems like right now, like they, you know, field still has to play Clemson. They still have to go through their testing. They still have to be interviewed. They still have to go through the combine. Like there's still a lot to do with these guys, but um, they seem like guys who, who are 
um, the, you know, solid picks at the number two picks. So we can't just trade down and I'll push off quarterback till, till, till the future because quarterbacks are so easy to land. Like when you're in this position, which I'm sure the Jets are not playing on being here anytime soon again, you kind of, you might, you might have to take the shot too early and take one of these guys. Like I don't want to be too late and have to trade up so many assets to get up to number two. Um, and I think both of these, these field, uh, both of the fields and Wilson are, um, most likely going to be deserving of that number two pick, number three pick, number four pick, number five pick. Um, if they, if they stay on their trajectory, um, feels was a surefire number two struggled a little bit. Um, now Wilson's is, Wilson is shooting up boards, but I'm not completely out on fields. Like, like people watch one game of fields, um, against, uh, Northwestern. And that's probably the only game they watch this, this year. And they say, Oh, he sucks. Oh, I watched one game. He's terrible. You know, like, like, like Lawrence has never had a bad game. Like Zach Wilson has never had a bad game. Um, not comparing directly, but like Aaron Rodgers has ever had a bad game. Like Tom Brady has never had a bad game. Like just because that's the most recent thing you, you've seen, don't that cloud your, your your opinion of him. Like it's very, very foolish. So I'm um, really excited to dive into these guys. Um, I did want to open up with the plays that change the game. Um, I'm going to you know, do duds, studs, et cetera, later. But um, the, the, the the biggest plays of this game that completely changed it, um, momentum swings, these things. I have a couple of plays here that were just crazy. Um, starting off, you know, the Jets scored, scored a touchdown and they blocked the, they blocked a punt, which they turned into a to a, a field goal. But at this point, they block a punt. They're coming out with energy. Their Rams look lack, lackadaisical. Like there's really – I'm not going to break it down because I'm not, you know, really in tune to a lot of, um, you know, punt – blocks and things like that um obviously you don't want these two guys taking the same guy in 87 right here so they don't do a good job within their protection i don't know how they call their protection 49 jt hassel a guy i've never heard of um maybe it just in passing blocks a punt like great you know it's not like it's 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 a uh, gidry or any of these guys who might be here for a while so that really started to make me a little bit nervous. I see that play. I'm like, Oh my God, which by the way, I'm, I'm sorry. Sublime music channel. If that made me nervous, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, good job. Uh, but <laughs> just so stupid. It's just it talking absolutes in the NFL is just so foolish. So I saw that and I was like, really? Like, okay. Um, may near interception, this play again, later in the game, butthole puckered. Uh, they are playing, uh, just a basic cover, uh, they're playing um, cover three sky, and he is in the curl to flat, base cover three, and obviously widens out with the sifter um, who leaks out. Goff does not put enough air onto it, almost an interception, and it bounces into Everett's hands. Everett, Everett runs it for 25. For the most of the game, I was just completely numb and didn't say anything. Like the people around me, my family were like, oh my God, like, you know, they, they knew I was going to be furious if they lost. So it was a lot of silence, but this guy actually screamed a little bit. Uh, just like, oh, because I really thought he picked it. Um, not a good play by by Goff. Good good job by Marcus May widening out and almost getting his hands on it. But of course, it bounces right into, I believe it's Everett's hands and runs for more yards. Um, that was a that was a, like a swing where I was like, okay, maybe it's starting to kind of um, go towards the Rams. Um, obviously not. Um, one of the next plays of the game, I think this was, I don't know if this was the next play. This is the same, I'm pretty sure this is the same drive. Um, but holding acres run um tight tight zone um and again pretty pretty wide open um not not a good job here by by hall recognizing this this gap coming so i want to see hall play this a little bit better again i'm gonna make this relatively short um it's it's 45 plays but um I, I really, I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna rush a little bit. I do really want to get into the, into the Wilson and Fields stuff. I think I'm gonna do Wilson fully and then Fields. Um, those reviews will come later down the line because listen, as soon as the, as soon as the season's done, what's gonna happen is the Jets are gonna fire their coach. When they fire their coach, they're gonna hire a new guy within a week or so. I'm gonna have to get into that freaking heavy for a week, put out a film review. Um, then I'll most likely put up a couple, couple of Jets player like reviews like on Twitter and stuff like that waiting until free agency free agency will come i'll break down the main guys from free agency and then i'll have these guys in my back pocket um where i'll do the film reviews i'll, I'll discuss my thoughts on them but the actual film reviews will probably be later in the year maybe i'll adjust that a little bit but here acres runs for a touchdown um and they end up getting holding right here on 63 63 does not do a good job moving to the second level his, his steps are too big that, that's his problem he's too high and you see you see how his steps are very large um so he, he kind of 
comes into contact high um, right here. And it doesn't, he's not, he's not working off his in steps. He doesn't have good hand placement and he's not carrying uh, Hewitt down the field. So he kind of, he is not coming to this block like he should again, a little bit more patience, a little bit better technique. Um, Hewitt does a good job of trying to shed it and get inside. Akers sees the lane holding right here leads to a field goal at this point. I'm like, okay, you know, I, I think this is what 20 to four, 24 or no, sorry, this is 17 to 24. Um, they kicked the field goal and it was, tw they won 24 to 20. So yeah, I think this was 17 to 24. So they tied it up um, right here. I, I, I believe that that was the case, but at this point it's like, okay, the Rams have momentum. They're going to win this game. Holding ends up in a field goal, like brutal, absolutely brutal watching it. Like it just did not have a good, you did not have a good feeling. Jets, jets come out after that, uh, go three and out. And then this play happens, which again, this is the play stood up, started to yell and was so freaking disappointed. And I remember my, the, my fiance was like, Oh, well, you know, they got to the 40 yard line. That's good. I'm like, yeah, you know, the 40 line isn't the 40 yard line. Isn't it? It's not a touchdown. Like now they can stop for a field goal. Like this sucks. Um, not a good job by, by a couple of jets here. I believe it's, it, you know, Gadry, a couple of them don't do a good job. Um, you'd hope that a punt returner in this situation in this much green grass versus a punter, he'd be able to, to break this tackle or run for a touchdown. Obviously this would have been the game pretty much at this point. It's 27 to 24. The Rams have all the momentum. It's a game. Um, and it's funny to think that a punter that we drafted in what the sixth round might be the difference between us and Trevor Lawrence. Um, might, or might be one of the many differences, you know, this game between us and Trevor Lawrence. But uh, again, uh, is not able to 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 shake him. Uh, again, from the other view, you see a couple of guys who are not really doing a, a great job and kind of over pursue their 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 lanes right here. Um, again, a lot of these guys need to gear down a little bit. They're they're penetrating so hard. You need to. Um, obviously get your feet under you and expect cuts. And these guys are all just running way too hard and he cuts right in between all of them. Like they, they just, they're not patient enough with their feet. Um, overrun it again. Great for this moment. And at this point, I'm like, Holy shit. He's, you know, he's at the 50. There's nobody else there. And in my opinion, you know, should he have geared down a little bit and broke to the outside? Like, look how much room is in here or out here. All, all he had to do was give him a, you know, almost like a bam step like a step or two inside one, two, and then break back outside. That's all they had to do. And he tried to, and he tried to jump inside when you're, you're, he's running full speed. And now you're trying to like, basically literally like jump inside. Man does a good, great job, you know, diving for it. Hell of a job by man. I think there's his fourth time doing that this year, but like, God damn 14. Like, what are you doing? Look at this. Uh, and then it led to these next plays. Sorry to take you through the pain, but it's a review. Four more plays of just this whole outcome. Um, block in the back from Higby. It's another massive play after this power, power turn. Um, they're running like counter, uh, counter, counter, counter OF, and break up the middle. Good job by Acres. Cuts up field, good job widening, getting away from Hewitt's stiff arm. And Higby does a t just a lazy job right here. They, they're going to watch this in the film room, and they're not going to be happy with Higby because climbs to second level, gets in front of Marcus May, and just gets lazy. He just gets lazy with his feet. Watch, watch, watch the effort into this block. That's, that's what leads Marcus May to be able to, to shoot downhill and try to get the, um, the tackle, and he gets a block in the back. Where again, you'd think late in the game, in a situation where you need to win, you're fighting for your division. Higby would do what you're supposed to do. You know, get your hands lashed into the shoulder pads. Um, you know, lock lock your elbows by by turning your your thumbs outside, close the ground, get your elbows tighter to your body, work off your insteps, like do what you're supposed to do. And he just lazily just just pitter patters with his feet and freaking ends up with a block in the back and, and that takes the the rams from you know where you know whatever the 16 yard line to you know however far this penalty brought them back like terrible job by Higby, um absolutely awful and then that leads to you know the third and fourth down um that the that the rams eventually have third and four fourth and four and you have a 
again, you know, in this situation, third and four, attacking a linebacker, you know, they have they have the pick, the rub, and then the wheel. Um, sure, I get it, but you'd think versus the Jets linebackers, um, they're showing man, you'd, you'd like to attack over the middle right here um, instead of making Goff make a difficult throw. Throws to the out, outside, you know, vertical and outside the numbers are not, this is not an easy throw to make. And even for Goff, like I don't, he's forcing this ball. He's a clean pocket. I, I would like to see him um, honestly not throw this ball. It's it's not like he got affected by the rub and man coverage. Like he stayed over the top, which is exactly what you don't want him to do. Um, he just chucks the ball up. Like this is his decision to just throw this ball up there. Like one, he could have stepped up in the pocket, clean pocket, could have maybe hit this guy. Um, and he could have scrambled, honestly. Um, but don't like the play call. Don't like the decision by Goff to throw that just fading backwards. And he throws it out of bounds. So he doesn't have a shot to make that play. So completely wasted play. Terrible play call. My, you know, not absolutely terrible, but still not ideal. Goff, not a good job. That leads to fourth and four. And and fourth and four is is terrible. Like, what is what what is Adam Gase? I, I, what is a, I'm just going to say Adam Gase. What is Sean McVay doing? Like, this is your this is your play call on fourth and four, all these, like, and again, and one hint, you know, m- more of um, a decision by Goff too, is they're showing man coverage, obviously. Um, they're playing like the Jambo where he's going to press the point and these are playing first in, first out on, on, on the number one and number three. Um, and your decision here is to go after Marcus May like Marcus May is the best coverage guy the Jets have, uh, you know, again, maybe a little bit overrated by fans, but the, Jet, the best Jet, uh, coverage guy they have. And one throw isn't that good because it's, it's too far inside. If anything, throw it to the outside, make it, let him use his body and kind of throw it more of like a fade. So not a good throw. And that's your decision. You have to get, you have to get three, you have to get four freaking yards. One, if, if he didn't just automatically go to this read, um, the Jets blow this coverage, by the way. You have Hall again. Who, if they're playing first in, first out, there is, there there are rules. Like, and I don't know how the Jets teach you, like how far he pushes vertical, all this stuff. If they're going to switch, whatever it may be, whatever the rules are, one of them supposed to take his vertical, which looks like Hall. Hall's eyes get stuck on this on this whip route, and you have Robert Woods in the seam right here. Who, again, is there a, is is it cover one? So is there a safety? Yes. Is this a throw that a quarterback should make? Every single day of the week, yes, he should. He should have waited a second or or seen this, and he doesn't. Obviously, there are there's a little bit of pressure in his face, so he, he did have to kind of just like chuck it up there. Um, but that was open, so that was killer to see that this was right here. Um, if his decision was not to attack the Jets' best coverage guy, or even if he wanted to throw it underneath and he threw it here, all this guy to do is catch it and turn for literally a quarter of a yard. Whip route. If he threw this to the outside shoulder. It's it's a first down. If you threw this, it's a first down. If you threw this to the outside, it's a first down. So I don't love the play call um, for everything for for the concept being deeper than it had to be. I don't love the play calls overall in this game for not attacking the spot dropping of the linebackers, attacking the linebackers in general. This is a fourth and fourth of the game attacking Marcus May. Um, brutal, uh, brutal, brutal, brutal. Uh, then this is to wrap up the game. Obviously, they gave up the first down the run plays. Um, and then this happens third and six, the Rams, along with a lot of their blown coverages of this game, man coverage completely blow this defense. I, I don't know what they're trying to do. You have Griffin in the flat third and six, who's completely wide open. Nobody takes him. Donald could hit him, turn up field for, for 30 yards if he wanted to. Um, doesn't throw that, which he's not reading that side of the field. You have two guys. And, and this is, of course, the game we don't want the Jets to win is the game that they that they do all these pre-snap motions and screw up a team. But the games we want them to to uh, to win early in the season, they don't do this. Like, obviously, the first couple of games of the season, we want them to win still. They don't do this. You have two guys um, who carry the, the flat. You have Gore, who is sitting wide open over the middle because two guys – um, start to take the, the the short hitch stop from whoever this is, Herndon or whatever. Nobody takes the running back. He's sitting there wide open. He just backpedals for a first down. Like, what is the Rams defense doing? Why, how are there two guys open on, on third and six, like, for the biggest game or one of the biggest games of your season? Um, Man, man, oh, man. That's it for that. 
Moving on to the studs of the game. Two games left. I thought I was going to do duds three more times. Studs of the game. They start off. Um, <laughs> Bryce Hall is my is first pick of, of the season. Um, good for him. You know, uh, not a good play by Goff. You know, a, again, if we're being honest, I'd like to be honest and fair with everything. Great play by Hall. Worst play by by Goff. Fake pitch, naked naked out to the right side. You have um, you basically have a three level read, short, intermediate, deep, over route, and again, if anything, the Jets run a cover two. Cover two, too deep. He's a curl to flat. Um, good job not getting completely sucked in by the play action. Plays his curl to flat, just continues to maintain depth to see if he's going to be able to jump anything that Goff throws. If anything, I would honestly probably like to see, again, just being honest, I would like to see him get a little bit more depth and notice this over route and start to match that a little bit more. Like, I want to see his awareness of, of things coming to his zone. He's either locked a little bit back, uh, more back onto Goff again. Process versus results. I don't want to be somebody who just hypes up a play to hype up a play. I want to be brutally honest with you guys, and that's why I want you guys to come to this channel. Um, so, okay play by him to stay here. Terrible play by Goff. He does not see him at all. Um, awesome interception, though. The interception is fantastic. Like, this, that athleticism, or, you know, or just the, the, the tracking of the ball into one hand is fantastic. Like, that, that, that is top-notch. I'm just talking about I want to see him – you know, if this play, if Goff was a good quarterback, he would realize this. And if anything, um, you know, just continue to let him sit and then either throw it to the sideline once he, once he, once he clears his hallway, or just float it over his head. Like that's something that Goff should have done. Goff never saw it. Like he was throwing behind him anyway. The throw was going to be completely behind him. He had to see he was going to have to sit this down. So um, again, we'll watch this from the other view, but. Great play by Hall in terms of like just just him getting his first pick and the actual athleticism of the pick could have improved on on his depth a little bit, but Goff never looks, never looks. He never sees Hall. His eyes are there the entire time. That's how easy this was. Terrible play by Goff to not see that. Throws it again. The interception is fantastic, and then runs it back. You know. Good job playing your cloud for, for the most part. Again, could improve a little bit. Um, Goff is garbage, man. He's not a good quarterback. He's just not. You can show me all the throws he makes at tight coverage, not first reads and things like that. Like, I don't see it. Uh, McVay helps him out a lot. If McVay wasn't his coach, he would continue his first year um, and he would probably not be a starting quarterback. I can almost guarantee that. Um, Hall right here, uh, curl the flat. Cover two, widens out, gets the reroute. Again, ideally you want to keep that inside of you, not outside of you, but he does get the reroute. As soon as he gets that reroute, he's passing it off to um, whoever that is, um, Mollette, who's playing some safety. Uh, again, widens it out, expects Mollette to pick it up. His eyes immediately flash to anything threatening his curl to flat. Sees this guy ch as his check down. Comes up field, be, you know, starts working towards the running back before Goff even looks at it. Closes around really quickly. To watch the full video, click on the link in the description and become a JetX subscriber for free today.